Good morning, family of Trinity on Jackson and all the rest of you who are watching online. Pastor Karen here today to share a little of the Word of God with you and talk about perspective. Perspective. Perspective is a way in which we see things. And perspective allows us to see things differently depending on maybe the way we're standing, the culture that we come from, all the things that go into our understanding of our perspective. And the interesting about that is it not only changes how we see one another, but it also changes how we understand the things of God. Now, I want to give you some examples of perspective so that you have a little more understanding of what it is that I'm talking about. So I would like you to watch this video. It's a short little 30-second video, and I want you to see what animals do you see in this video. Ready? Watch. Now, I know you just watched that video, and hopefully some of you saw giraffes, and some of you saw elephants, and most of you saw both. Now, if you had actually been standing in that art installation, depending on where you stood, you either saw the elephant giraffe, or there were some places you could stand where you didn't see either. Perspective for that is exactly where it is that you were standing because where you're standing showed you exactly what it is that you would see. Now, it not only happens with pieces of art and visually, but it can also happen with words. And I want to give you an example of that as well. I have cousins that live in Massachusetts. And a number of years ago, I went to visit them, and I noticed they were using a particular word very differently than how I had heard that word. The word is the word wicked. Wicked. Now, if I were to call something wicked, I would think that I was calling something bad. But I noticed my cousins were calling everything wicked. And at first I was like, why, why is all of this bad? Until I understood their perspective. For them, the word wicked meant wonderful. It meant good. And so when they would say, oh my gosh, that is so wicked. They weren't saying that it was bad. They were saying that it was wonderful. But I didn't understand that until I understood their perspective, where it is that they were coming from and how they were using the word. So it can happen visually. It can happen with the words that we choose. It can also happen in our understanding of Scripture and how we try to understand what it is that God wants from each of us in terms of how we live our life by God's standards. And in today's Scripture that comes to us from the book of Mark, chapter 8, verses 31 through 38, we are going to see how the teachings of Jesus— were misunderstood by Peter because of his perspective. And we want to look at a couple of things that went into that perspective because I think the same thing that happened to Peter, it can also happen to us. We can misunderstand the things of God because we're looking at it from our perspective, a human perspective, rather than looking at it from God's perspective. So let's hear the word of the Lord today and let's try and see what God has for us to learn, shall we? Again, we're reading from Mark chapter 8, starting at verse 31 and going all the way down to verse 38. Let us hear the word of the Lord. Then Jesus began to tell them that the Son of Man must suffer many terrible things and be rejected by the elders and leading priests and the teachers of the religious law. He would be killed, and three days later he would rise from the dead. As he talked about this openly with his disciples, Peter took him aside and began to reprimand him for saying such things. Jesus turned around and looked at his disciples. Then he reprimanded Peter. Get away from me, Satan, he said. You are seeing things merely from a human point of view, not from God's. Then calling the crowd to join his disciples, he said, <clears throat> 
If any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way. Take up your cross and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake and for the sake of the good news, you will save it. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my message in these adulterous and sinful days, the Son of Man will be ashamed of that person when he returns in the glory of his Father with his holy angels. Now, don't get lost in that last section. I know that can be hard to understand, but we're going to get there in just a second. Well, maybe a couple seconds. But let's start from the beginning. Remember we talked about perspective and understanding the things of God. Well, in this particular scripture, Jesus is teaching to the disciples, and there's also a large crowd around. But at least for the moment, the large crowd isn't as close as what they will be in a little bit. So Jesus is trying to teach the disciples, and he's given them a very, very difficult lesson. Because he simply says that the Son of Man must suffer many terrible things, be rejected by the elders and others. He will be killed, but three days later he's going to rise from the dead. Now Peter and the disciples hear this. Now I'm sure they were looking at one another like, this is crazy talk. There is no way that that's going to happen. Because for them, and we actually talked about this a little bit a couple weeks ago, for them all they could hear was that first part. The man that they loved and that they have been following, that they have dedicated their whole life to, he is going to go to Jerusalem, and the leaders of the church, the synagogue, the Jewish rulers, they're going to reject him, punish him, and kill him. Well, that doesn't make any sense to them. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Now, we need to understand that this is not the first time these type of words have been spoken. Now, we're not going to go there today, but I want to invite you to go to Isaiah chapter 53. Yes, that's Old Testament. Isaiah 53, verses 3 through 12. You're going to hear the same message. The same message that Jesus just taught. Because way back in Isaiah, it talked about how the Messiah, God's chosen, would be rejected. He would be crucified, but he would also be raised again. So this is not a new teaching. But Peter could only hear it from his perspective. And his perspective was a human perspective. And that human perspective was about, this was a man that he loved, he adored, he had sacrificed everything and he was following it. And all he could hear was that he was about to lose him. Now, Jesus said three days later, I'm going to rise again. But that was so out of Peter's perspective. He could not understand that at all. He couldn't even hear it. All he could hear and understand is, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. That's the only perspective that Peter had in that moment. Now, it is hard for us to understand exactly what's going on here. And the easiest way for me to to try and get this across to you is if, let's say, an American presidential candidate announced towards the end of his campaign that he was going to go to Washington, be rejected, and then be executed. We'd be like, what? What are you talking about? Because that would not be in our perspective at all. Well... That's exactly what Peter and the other disciples are hearing from Jesus. And it goes back to the perspective or understanding of what Messiah is. Now, Jesus spoke very openly, and even Scripture says it was surprising how open he was with his disciples, which means he was forthright. He was telling them exactly the way it was going to be. But they couldn't fully understand it. Here's what Barclay says. Sometimes the Messiah was thought of as King David's lineage. But more often he was thought of as a great superhuman figure crashing into history to remake the world and to end to to vindicate God's people. The Messiah will be the most destructive conqueror in history, smashing his enemies into utter extinction." You see, that's how Peter and some of the other people back then thought of the Messiah. So this Messiah was going to come, and the Messiah was going to be a person of God's choosing. He was going to come, and he was going to end Roman Roman rule. 
Now, the Romans have been ruling Jerusalem for a long time. The Jewish people didn't like it. They wanted that to end. And they felt certain that this Messiah was going to come as a military individual and would rescue them and put them back on the top of the heap the same way they were when King David was around. That was their perspective. That's how they were interpreting Scripture. And so for, for Peter to hear these words from Jesus, he could not understand them. Because there was no way this superhuman military leader that the Messiah was supposed to be is going to be crucified? The two did not mesh at all. And Peter being Peter, he spoke up about that and he said, no, that's not going to happen. Now Peter was sincere in this. This isn't because Peter was trying to derail the things of God. It's not because Peter was trying to stop what was going to happen. He was saying this out of love, out of a sincere heart. Because he loved Jesus. He loved the teachings of Jesus, and, and, and he didn't want to lose him. But what he didn't understand is that everything that he was saying and doing was out of his humanity, out of his sincere love. But you see, it was not of God. And that's where we've got to be really careful with our perspective. And every one of us has it. Our perspective comes from our upbringing. It comes from our learning. It comes from the culture that is around us. It gives us a unique perspective on things. And we bring that perspective when we come to Scripture. The difficulty is sometimes that does not allow us to see Scripture the way it really is. It does not allow us to see what God is about to do. And this isn't the only Scripture that we see something like this happen in. You see, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they were godly men. I believe they were men of sincere heart. But their culture was about their control, about keeping the law. And that's how they operated. That was their perspective. But because of that perspective, they too could not see who the Messiah was. They could not understand what Jesus was doing because so often all they saw was a man who was breaking the law. Well, there was no way that could be the Messiah to them. They could not see and they could not understand the things of God because they could only see with their own eyes and their own humanity. Same way that we ourselves get messed up that way. But God calls us to surrender. You see, Jesus spoke to Peter and we know what he said. He said, get behind me, Satan. You are seeing things merely from a human point of view and not from God's. He laid it out plainly. Those are the same words he says to us sometimes too. Because sometimes when we're out looking at things that are happening, we also see it from our own point of view, our humanity, and not through the eyes of God. Now we're sincere in that. But even a sincere heart, it can be a wrong heart. And that is hard to admit. But it's truth. So Jesus then lays it out even more plainly for us to understand. Now I know this is the part gets hard to understand, so just stick with me for a moment. Let's, let's work through some of this, okay? Here's what Jesus says. Now, he is also called now the crowd. It's not just the disciples. He's called the crowd to come in closer to hear what he has to say. And here are his words. If any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way. Take up your cross and follow me. <laughs> what does he mean by that? Well, first we have to understand what it means by give up your own way. Remember that perspective that I talked about? That perspective, that's your way. That's your humanity. It's just, it's who you are. It's who you've been. When we come to Christ, we talk about a new life in Christ. 
But with that new life in Christ comes a new perspective, a new way of seeing things. Because God calls us to let go of the self, to let go of the way our humanity sees the things of this world, to set that aside in order to receive from the gifting of the Holy Spirit the ability to begin to look around in the world and to see it through God's eyes. And that begins to change everything around us. Remember the words that Jesus spoke? Give up your own way. Give up your perspective. Give up the way you've always understood the world. Give up your understanding of the ways of the world. Sometimes that means we have been so a part of the world that God calls us from and apart from the world so that we can begin to see it the way God sees it. We have to let go of self to allow God to enter in. Less and less of me and more and more of God. Now, that's a process. It's not going to happen instantaneously. And even when it does happen, to be honest, we just screw it up sometimes. Because as much as I want to see the world through God's eyes, I still see it very clearly sometimes through my own. Why? Because I still have things that are so strong there about me. Things that I desire. Things that I want to happen. Things that I love. But as I listen more and more to Jesus and find out more and more about Jesus, then he calls me to set that aside and to receive his eyes, his perspective, the way in which he understands the world. It is not easy, but it's worth it. So I not only have to give up my own way, my own perspective. But I have to take up the cross. The cross. Now, for us in our culture, let me tell you, we have cleaned up the cross more than, than almost any other symbol that is around us. But when those disciples heard Jesus talking about the cross, all they heard was an instrument of death. That's what a cross was. You didn't see crosses hanging on walls in people's houses back then. When you saw a cross, you knew somebody was going to die. That's all a cross was, an instrument of death. Now, nowadays, we have cleaned it up. We wear it around our necks. We have its symbols all around our churches. We use it in all sorts of services. We've really cleaned it up. And sometimes even we have to remember what the real perspective of the cross is. It's death. So when Jesus says to pick up your cross, he means go all the way. Be fully committed. Even to the point you're willing to die. I know that's not easy to hear, but that is truth. I am called to sacrifice myself, to, to set my perspective aside, to pick up the cross, which means to follow God in his perspective all the way, to be fully committed even unto death. And for the disciples, that death was a real reality. In our world, it's not as much a reality, at least in America, although in other countries, in other parts of the world, it, that is still a reality. And they know that to follow Jesus means they may have to sacrifice their life. Give up your own way. Take up your cross and follow me. Being fully committed. Fully committed to see the world as God sees it. Fully committed to bring change as God desires change to happen. Fully committed, fully sold out for Jesus all the way unto death. Now, does that mean I'm telling you to go out and, and die for Jesus? I am not telling you that. But what I am telling you is to be fully and absolutely committed. Committed. 
To be fully and absolutely committed to the point where you understand the difference between your perspective and God's perspective. That's what Peter had to learn, and, and that's what we have to learn as well. One commentator said this, denying self is not the same as self-denial. We practice self-denial when, for a good purpose, we occasionally give up things such as activities. But we deny self when we surrender ourselves to Christ and determine to obey His will. Now, we are in the second Sunday of Lent. I know, hard to believe. Second Sunday of Lent. And some of you may have already decided you are going to give up some things for Lent. You know, maybe you're going to give up Facebook, social media. Maybe some of you gave up chocolate. Maybe there's other things that you've given up. And, and to be honest, there are moments that create hardship. But the reality is there are only moments that create hardship. What we're talking about here is absolute and complete surrender. Determined to obey God's will. Denying self, living for God, fully and wholly devoted. And begin to see things from God's perspective. It changes everything. But, but here's the difficulty sometimes. The difficulty sometimes is, how do I know whether I'm looking at something through my perspective or through God's perspective? You know what? That's hard sometimes. Because even Peter, remember, he had the best of intentions when he called out Jesus and he said, no, you are not going to die. I am not going to let that happen. But we know now that was fully his humanity. That was nothing of God. But there's a couple of things I think that we can do to help us with our own perspective. One, we have to be in a community of faithful people, right? Peter could not have seen on his own what was wrong. He needed Jesus to point that out. And sometimes when I'm going through life, my own perspective, I can only understand because it's my perspective. I need other brothers and sisters in Christ who know me well, who can sometimes point out things in my life that, quite frankly, they're not of God. Things that, that I need to change. But I need them in my life. I need them to see the way I'm living, the words that I'm choosing, the things that I'm teaching, so that they can help correct me. And I have to listen to that. Sometimes I have the best of intentions, but sometimes I don't realize how much of my humanity has bled in. We need one another to live fully the way God wants us to live. It also has to match with Scripture. Do you remember when I said that all the way back in Isaiah, it talked about what was going to happen? Now, granted, Peter may not have remembered all the way back in Isaiah. But we need to be a student of the Word. We need to have an understanding of the concepts of God that are in the Bible so that we can make sure that the things that we are teaching and saying and using in life are truly in accordance with Scripture. And sometimes, quite frankly, we get that wrong. We think we know the Word. But so often, the Word that we think we know is the Word that has been handed down to us. And sometimes it's been handed down to us with a human, a human perspective rather than a God perspective. Sometimes God is about to do a new thing, but even the new thing is in accordance with Scripture. But we have to be open and available to allow God to do a new thing. That's where Peter made his mistake. He thought he understood. He had been taught by the religious leaders of his day exactly what a Messiah was supposed to be. But he could not understand what the Messiah was really going to be because he was stuck Stuck in what he'd been taught. Stuck in what he understood. Stuck in his own perspective. God calls us sometimes to set our perspective aside. To dive deep into the scriptures and find out what is it that God really desires? What is it that he's really doing? And is it something new? Just because it goes against our understanding, our perspective, does not mean that it's wrong. It should just force us to come to God even closer, to be in the Word of God even more, to be open to the Spirit saying, 
here's a new way of understanding. That's what Peter had to learn, a new way of understanding. Because we know the truth, because we're on this side of Easter. The truth is Jesus was going to be handed over to the religious leaders. He was going to be crucified. But three days later, he was going to rise again. Now we know it because we live on this side of it. But what are the things happening in our life right now that God is saying to us, get behind me, Satan? Because we can only see them through our own humanity rather than the perspective of God, God's view. God is a big God. Let us not fall in the trap of trying to bring him down to what we can understand and what we determine is right. I invite you this Lent to really look at your own perspective and see where it might be different than what God is saying. What are the new things that God is trying to teach us, to show us? And where is it that we need to change? Peter sure changed. And if he can do it, so can we. You are a blessed people. Go forth and be a blessing from God's point of view. Amen.